We're joined by John Arquilla, a legendary professor here at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. And John, you uh, wrote a cover story for Foreign Policy Magazine recently titled The New Rules of War. Now, the last decade of experience that we've had in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan have been fairly punishing. Now we're moving into a phase where we should be taking stock of the lessons from that and ad adapting them to the same places where we still are fighting, but also future environments. So have we learned the new rules of war, and what are they? I think we're starting to learn them. We are getting mm -hmm. a little better in Afghanistan. Uh, one of the first rules is you get smaller. And so one of the things we're doing now, instead of being on big bases, like in Bagram with right. its Burger King, right. uh, we're now sending platoons out right. to little villages. And we uh -huh. have these village stability operations going on where a handful of Americans live with mm -hmm. Uh, the Afghans. So we're getting smaller, we're closer, mm -hmm. and we're a lot quicker. When something happens, we get that we're right on the spot rather right. than a couple hours helicopter ride away. So that rule we're getting. Uh, also in a larger sense, uh, since I wrote that article, the American Army Division mm -hmm. is sort of hollowing out and going away. We're right. really emphasizing brigades a lot right. more, something smaller than a division. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that we'll go even smaller than that right. in, in the years to come. So I I think we're starting to grasp the new rules. Of course, mm -hmm. the key, th uh, uh, one of the other key rules is finding matters. We're in a, an era now when military affairs are driven by the ability or the inability to find the opponent. Mm -hmm. The smaller you get, the more distributed your forces are, the better you are as a finder. And in the urban world, it's also even more difficult to well, find. Well, this is going to be the next big challenge, is how mm -hmm. do you do the business of finding the enemy in a large urban insurgency? Right. Now, speaking of going smaller, you wrote a very controversial uh, piece for the New York Times recently about ways, very concrete ways, to shrink the defense budget and cut spending. How much are we going to save with your cuts and over what span of time? And do you believe the Obama administration can do it? Well, first, I believe President Obama has taken this uh, very seriously, and I have some personal experience to uh, confirm that he has a deep interest uh, in this. And in his recent speech on solving our budgetary problems, defense came up very prominently. So mm -hmm. that's a good sign. In terms of the article I wrote, that was just a sampling of the handful of things right. that you could begin with that would right. save us, oh, at least $50 billion every year, but running into the right. hundreds of billions as we, do we really need a new aircraft carrier that's the same as the last one, except now the, the catapult for the jets is electromagnetic instead right. of steam? Come on. Yeah. Uh, we ought to take the numbers off those carriers and put bullseyes on them. They're big and they're increasingly uh, vulnerable to uh, a, a range of weapons. So we, the, the, the savings could run in the trillions, but it's not just a matter of saving money. It's about building a more effective military. Right now we are spending most of our defense budget on old systems that are right. highly vulnerable and less useful. And so we want to invest in new things. And it just turns out that these new things are smaller and smarter cost less and make us more uh, uh, effective. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a way to have a bipartisan discourse about this rather than a partisan debate. And it seems to me that the president is committing to doing just that. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think with his next choice of Secretary of Defense, we're, we're going to see some remarkable changes beginning mm -hmm. at the Pentagon. So we have something to look forward to. Now, John, you uh, people should know that you are one of the great pioneers of net-centric warfare theory, fourth-generation warfare, all of these uh, concepts that now people take for granted, but you've been there since day one talking about networks and net war. But now we're also talking about just network policy. And if you look at what's happening in the Middle East and the role of social yeah. networks and those technologies in bringing down certain governments and informing a whole new political approach in those societies, what are we going to learn from that? What has been the role of those institutions, and how do we carry that network approach forward? Well, I think the fundamental lesson is that social networking beats nation building. And we have tried militarily to go in and change regimes and mm -hmm. bring government in a box and all these other euphemisms right. for what we're trying to do in the world. We are trying to do good. We're not doing very well. Right. Uh, what we're seeing instead in these social networks is the tremendous power that comes with bringing people together, whether it's the friends of Khalid Saeed in, in mm -hmm. Egypt or uh, in Bahrain or in other places, uh, people begin to act as if they are free, and, and soon they are, to borrow the phrase from Václav Havel. And I see a lot of similarity uh, between these movements now and the social movements that were freeing Central and Eastern Europe in mm -hmm. the late 1980s. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity, 
and again, it's done with a great economy of, of effort. You don't, right. you don't require enormous American expenditure, involvement, right. uh, military action. You simply have to encourage people. You simply have to know that, right. to let them know that you support what they're doing. And, and this, mm -hmm. to me, is w what Americans can do to burnish their image anew. I think our right. deepest strategic problem is that in the wake of uh, Iraq and the other stumbling over this past decade, uh, we need to um, sort of uh, rekindle an image of an America that stands for uh, a future based on commonly held universal and, and, and uh, liberal uh, democratic values. Uh, that means we applaud it when we see it. Mm -hmm. uh, we support it uh, in, in uh, the ways that allow people to empower and free themselves uh, instead of suggesting that freedom grows out of the barrel of a gun. I think right. that's been our most mistaken idea in foreign policy. Mm -hmm in a long time. Mm -hmm. Now networking gives us a chance to right. redress the balance. So from nation building to network building, uh, John Arquilla, thank you so much for joining us on foreignpolicy.com. Pleasure to be with you.